Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today I want to talk about The Division 2's roadmap. I think by now the community is starting to come down from the hype and excitement of Season 2's release. It seems that, for a lot of people, the Paradise Lost Incursion was a big hit and has given people a renewed sense of purpose for playing the game. And so, since that, I've already seen the question begin to be asked, what is next? This update has left people wanting more, and I can't blame them. I think the majority of current players know that we have a very big update on the distant horizon, an endgame redesign, and a brand new DLC coming at the end of year 5. If you didn't know that, then surprise, it's very exciting, but that's still a ways off. So what about until then? What can we expect from the game in these coming months? That's what I want to address today. The answers have been mostly written out by now by Ubisoft, however a few plans have changed over time, some things got announced or moved around at different points. So today I wanted to definitively update you all on what we can expect from The Division 2 in the lead up to the looming DLC coming at the end of year 5. And let's get right into it. If you enjoy breakdowns and coverage on the game like this, then be sure to click that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to take this chronologically, starting from where we're at at the point in time of this video's posting, which is shortly after Year 5 Season 2's release in October, and leading towards the release of the DLC. The first thing I want to talk about is, of course, the continuation and eventual finale of Season 2, which is, again, the season currently active as of the making of this video. After the switch was made to making Year 5 Seasons four months in duration as a opposed to three, Massive has subsequently put a four-week gap in between each new season target release. This means that we are currently awaiting the second target of the season to unlock, and as of right now, the fourth and final target is set to release on December 26th. Now, in my opinion, the recent seasons for the game have been really excellent in their story delivery and intrigue and mysteries they're creating for the community. However, Season 2 in particular has extra emphasis on its finale, as we know we're going to have a confrontation with the Recruiter, who is the authoritative hunter who's been stalking us for quite a while. There's already been much speculation on if we will unmask them, if so, who will it be? And so, without question, I think this season's ongoing story, and certainly its finale, will create a big pop within the community, so we've got that to look forward to at the end of 2023. Concurrently to that, we also have this year's holiday event to look forward to. This was previewed recently during Season 2's special report stream by the developers, and thanks to that, we know they're making some changes this time around compared to years past. Assumedly beginning sometime in December, we will have 15 consecutive daily projects unlock, and before anyone freaks out, these projects will accumulate for the duration of the event, meaning no, you don't have to complete each one on the specific day they unlock. But these 15 projects will award a variety of things, including supposedly 10 brand new items, ranging from cosmetic rewards to this new main event item, a special named backpack. These projects will also allow you to collect rewards from past year's events. And so, like I said, that should begin in December and take us to January, at which point we will likely start to hear rumblings about Year 5 Season 3. The PTS for that, I would imagine, will begin by the end of January, as the current in-game calendar for Season 2 has it ending on February 20th, suggesting that Season 3 will start the very same day. Now, what do we know about this next major update? The answer lies somewhere between a lot and not much at all. Now, as was outlined back at Division Day when we were presented the Year 5 roadmap, Year 5 Season 3 is not set to deliver any big new content additions. And by that I mean something like Descent from Season 1 or the Incursion from this season. Now, given the return to New York, which we'll talk about in a minute, I've spoken to more than a few people who have their theories that there's some big content coming that the devs are keeping a secret. Obviously, that's an attractive idea. I wish it were true, but I find that to be highly unlikely, as if that were the case, they probably would have used it to make the year's roadmap look as enticing as possible. So, upon first hearing this, that Season 3 is looking to be smaller in scope, that may sound disappointing, but stick around towards the end of the video, as I want to talk a bit about the reasoning behind it. The main selling point of Season 3 that we were sold on the roadmap for Year 5 is that it will see us returning to New York, and that the story of this season will be a major focus. They haven't really teased or confirmed this in any sort of way, but I have my suspicions that this might indicate we're in for a beefed up season in a way, meaning maybe there will be a few extra activities per target, a few unique objectives, some extra lore delivery, and that's partly because of the premise, where we've been told that Season 3 will see us uncovering secrets involving Aaron Keener and his rogue agents from back in Warlords of New York, and teased by the game's creative director himself, this season sets out to answer the question of, do we really know what Keener meant in his dying breaths when he said that we have no no idea what's coming. So that's all very promising. Along with that, given the nature for Year 5 Season 3 as an update from what we know, it would not shock me if we get some sizable quality of life updates and improvements in this update as well. 
Again, because there's not any major content addition, it might give them the bandwidth to focus on those things a bit more than usual. But largely, that is what we know about Season 3 so far. And as far as we know, that will be the last content drop to lead us right into Season 4, the endgame redesign, and this new DLC package. Which, if we're going off of that four-month season schedule, would place that launching right around June of 2024. So, in part, I make this video to remind and inform you all of what to expect in the coming months for the game, but also to set expectations a little bit, because while there is some exciting stuff coming up, namely the big storylines and yet-to-be-revealed quality-of-life features for Season 3, content-wise, we've pretty much got everything that we're going to get until that DLC arrives. And I think that is important to recognize now and not be frustrated by it down the line. The truth of the matter is this isn't surprising to me at all, given the development team's resources and constraints. They're working with far less people and much less experience than the Division's team ever had back in the day, and the stuff they're working on for Season 4 is so far larger in scope than anything we've gotten since the resumption of content for the game. And if you didn't know, the endgame redesign in DLC has already been the team's primary focus for a long time. This season's incursion was made by a team at Ubisoft Shanghai, who are now a permanent part of the team but beforehand obviously operated separately, and to me, it's of no surprise that Season 3 is looking to be smaller in scope. Because it is, and has been for a long while, all hands on deck for the team to be creating this huge content drop we're getting next year. And it's going to be a very exciting time when it all arrives. But like I said, I think it's important to recognize what that means for the game in the meantime. They're doing their absolute best to pull off something bigger than they've ever attempted before, and I for one am very, very excited to see it. If you've been around the channel for a while, you might know that I highly encourage anyone who ever feels bored or burnt out on the game to take a break, go and play some of the other wonderful titles that are out there on the market. I think that's going to be a vital thing for many of us to do over these upcoming months. And oftentimes, I find that taking breaks like that enhances my appreciation for The Division when I return. And if there's a time to be pumped up to play Division, it's next year with Season 4, so don't burn yourself out before then and spoil the fun. This is one reason why I've said before that around March 2024 would be the absolute perfect time for them to launch the Division Heartland, right? If we get Season 3 in February, check out all the new stuff there, but then instead of waiting another four months for the DLC with nothing to do, we'd have Heartland to dive into. That'd be sick, but that's wishful thinking, so I'll leave it there. My friends, that is a look at what to expect with The Division 2 in the coming months, and some of my analysis for what it means in relation to this upcoming DLC that everyone is excited for. We've got some slower months ahead of us, however, I think so long as everybody sets their expectations accordingly, then there will be plenty of fun stuff to check out. And before we know it, it'll be boots on the ground in Brooklyn for an all-new mission. Let me know your thoughts on this whole discussion, y'all. What are your reactions and thoughts to what's ahead for The Division 2? And what are you most looking forward to in the lead-up to Season 4? Leave it all down below, and as always, I'll be very curious to read through it. But that is going to do it for me today, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Rogue Gold.